The trend for corporation tax rates in the UK is undoubtedly downwards. We're on 20% at the moment, 19% from next year, 2017, and 17% from 2020. In the world at large, with countries with whom we compete, Hungary is bringing their tax rate down to 9%. That's their aspiration. Um, more important, perhaps, is the US talking their rate down to 15%. Theresa May, our Prime Minister, has stated that we need to remain competitive, and especially so given the uncertainty following the referendum of what a post-Brexit life will look like. We need to remain competitive from a corporate tax standpoint. So with all of that in mind, what does that mean, if anything, for UK financial planners? Well, holding money, generating money inside UK companies looks very favourable compared to personal tax rates. Once you enjoy a modicum of success, then holding your money in a zone where the tax rate is below 20% must be attractive for that money that isn't required for day-to-day -day expenditure. Now, with that being the case, it may just be that more companies, once they've repaid debt, maintained a good level of working capital and perhaps even looked at funding pensions, have money, has money left to invest. And if they have that, then it's important that advisors bear in mind what you need to take into account when you're talking about corporate investment. Initially, of course, you need to first establish that there isn't going to be no short to medium term need for that cash for business purposes. And once you've established that, the other things you need to take into account is inheritance tax and the impact that holding cash or investments that aren't used for the purpose of the trade might have on business property relief. Um, if it's significant, it could easily reduce the amount of business property relief that is available because that cash or, or investment not used for business purpose is known as accepted assets. Um, one way that might be worth considering of maintaining business property relief if you have that kind of cash is investing in appropriate BPR qualifying investments. Now that carries with it, of course, as well as the tax attraction that could emerge from an inheritance tax standpoint, because there's a kind of look through to the BPR qualifying investment that the company has bought. Of course, you need to consider how appropriate that is in relation to purely investment risk and whether you're prepared to take that additional risk and liquidity risk by investing in such an investment. But the case can be made on inheritance tax grounds at least and then taken into account with all of the rest of the risk-based considerations. Beyond that, you need to consider entrepreneur's relief because if the amount that you have available that is not used for the purpose of the trade that is sitting in investments is more than 20%, very broadly speaking, the tests are a little more wide-ranging than that, but if there's more than 20% of the overall value of the company sitting in investments, then it may well be that entrepreneur's relief is denied when you come to sell the business. Very important, of course, for SME owners who have an aspiration to sell their business. It seems from practice that if you merely hold trading profits that have been accrued through trading on deposit without taking a positive act to invest them, then that will not give rise to that risk. But if you take the money and look to invest it, because maybe interest rates you're dissatisfied with, who wouldn't be at the current levels, then that would count as taking a positive step and making an investment. And if the amount is more than 20%, very broadly speaking, then you could be in trouble in relation to entrepreneur's relief. The last point I'd like to make is that if you are considering investment, having taken into account all of those issues that I've just talked about, liquidity, other expenditure, paying down debt, um, the inheritance tax and the entrepreneur's relief issues, and you decide to make an investment, then a new accounting standard, relatively new anyway, FRS 102, really leads to the conclusion that for all but relatively small businesses, really small businesses, so-called micro-entities, it can make very little, indeed no, tax sense to invest through an investment bond UK or offshore. Investing in direct equities or collectives, however, unwrapped, can make sense and can look quite attractive if you're happy with the investment aspects of such uh, an action, because the dividends from those investments received by a company will be tax-free on receipt by the company, because it's UK company to UK company, even offshore dividends will probably be tax-free if held by a company, received by a company. The capital gains will qualify for indexation relief and then the gain, when it's realised, not on a year-on-year -year basis, would then be assessed at the corporation tax rate. So a lot to consider when you think about corporate investment, but there could well be a little more of that money available and so those considerations may well be worth getting to grips with. And we do cover these in quite a lot of detail within Technique.